What's going on guys? I was watching Misfits last weekend. They had Lance from Solder Weld on there. Reached out to him through an email. Sent me some swag. Pretty nice little hat. Some flux. Some sample alloy sticks. Pen. Some stickers. Brochures. Things like that. Little swag pack. But uh, thought we would try this stuff out. See how well it works. I've never used it before. So let's see what it does. My pals on the front porch, chicken picking. My mom was in the kitchen cooking chicken. And Flo was tuning up the dope, bro. Uncle Joe. <laughs> Alright guys, first thing I want to talk about is I bought this thinking maybe this would be a better option for brazing aluminum. And I gotta tell you, because it has that fine point they advertise on it. I tried, it just doesn't get things hot enough in a full area. If you look right here, it wants to bubble up a little bit. It just doesn't do a great yeah, that's that's uh there's that one at right there. That's solder weld. And we're gonna talk about that here in a minute, but it just doesn't give you a full round complete heat so i'm gonna be taking that back to lowe's that didn't work very well i'm gonna stick with what i've been using which is this tip that works great trying to braise an aluminum repair but right now we're going to do solder weld versus al 822 let's see what happens all right guys the first thing I want to talk about is obviously the solder weld. You're going to get these aluminum rods. This is just a sample kit that was sent to me. And then you also have to have this flux right here. And one of the downsides of that is don't knock it over. Or you're going to spill half of it. And then somebody's going to think you're snorting cocaine or something trying to do a work on their AC system. So anyway, don't knock that over. Or you're gonna lose money so right there is a negative to me but uh, let's see how it performs so I followed the instructions about heating the rod dipping it into flux and then getting the flux on there getting it up to 600 degrees it gets clear and then you can you know I tried doing that and I ended up with this and then a big bubble right here on this one and you know it takes some practice with this stuff and it seems to be like there's a lot of i mean not a lot but there's, there's steps that you have to go through to get it just right and sometimes i don't know anyway we're going to try it real quick and uh we're going to do the solder weld first and then we're going to do the al822 which is what i typically use and then you be the judge on what you want to try to use fixing leaks in aluminum coils all right guys you can see right here trying to heat this up you got to have your heat just right or you'll burn through this aluminum so this is something you've got to practice at or you'll knock a hole right through your aluminum so right above it is another hole right here so we're going to start with the solder weld and you got your rod you're supposed to heat this rod dip it into flux so let's get our heat adjusted a little bit Just broke off. 
really hot in my finger. Where it was. We'll get that turned off. And I mean guys, that I mean maybe it sealed the hole, I don't know. But that's awful boogery looking to me. So I mean maybe it sealed the hole. But there seems to be a lot of processes and a lot of steps you have to go through to use this stuff. So I don't know. But I mean this is like my sixth time trying it. And I mean I'm following the directions they give you. So let's see what the AL822 does. Alright guys, let's see how the AL 822 performs what I like about the AL 822 is that the flux is internal to the rod you just have to make sure that when you're finished you pinch off the end keep the flux inside of it when you put it back in the container it doesn't fall out which obviously is better than having a pile of cocaine laying on your tailgate or in your work area but uh, this is what I've been using let's see how it performs against solder welds product Like I said, every one of these I've cleaned with a wire brush and prepped it. As you can see guys, there's a reason that I use what I use. If you look at how nice that is, those holes are filled. It's not boogered up. It goes fairly quickly. There's not all the steps of having to heat the rod, dip it into flux, spread the flux and then wait for your rod to heat up and then it is in chunks and you end up with the boogers and the little stuff like that i mean i it is what it is but for me guys the al822 with the internal flux works great now that i'm done with this rod i'm simply going to take some diagonal cutters or some snips and clip off that end when I do that it's gonna pinch that closed and it's gonna contain the flux that's left in that long rod there no pun intended that's what she said anyway but uh guys pick your poison the process of using this and you've got to make sure you don't spill it over and knock it down and lose half of what you paid for those aluminum rods you know this is the shorter one i'll give them that it probably heated up pretty quick but i mean no more than you saw me heating that rod it was already getting hot on my fingers so you're gonna have to wear gloves or maybe use some pliers or something to hold it however you want to do it that al 822 didn't get hot at all fixed the problem quickly so in situations where you have an aluminum coil uh, maybe it's going to take a while to get one. It's not under warranty. Save the homeowner a little bit of money if it's an accessible repair. Which we're going to do one of these real quick with the AL822. Usually these aluminum coils leak right down in here. And I've already prepped that a little bit. The train coils that I deal with mostly with the aluminum and some of the Lennoxes. The leaks are always in this fitting right here around the edge of it. 
and you can usually tell you see how this one came from the factory how white that is how full that is then you get some of these other ones where they're a little you know opened up pretty good they didn't get a good solid seal on it so let's try that real quick which is mostly what i deal with when it comes to repairing coils is getting down in here so let's heat that up real quick and show you how that repair works and i'm going to be using the al822 As you can see we filled that in pretty nice obviously you would go all the way around it but I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how that works you fill that thing in that's where your leaks typically are it's fixed every leak that I've found in aluminum coils the train ones the Lennox ones that I've had to repair so it's an opportunity if it's accessible you know getting down in here somewhere trying to fix a leak you're gonna melt that drain pan probably might cause some damage you just have to assess your situation and, and, and see what's going to work and what's not going to work but if you got a u-bin out here somewhere leaking on one of these coils and uh, it's going to be three thousand dollars for somebody to replace a coil as opposed to maybe half that doing a quick leak repair maybe squeezing two or three more years out of the system then al822 guys that's what i use that's what I'm going to keep using. Solder weld may be good for some people, but it just seems to be a little messy. And the steps involved in it, I mean, you saw how quick I started heating that up and got it sealed. Uh, it was just a matter of probably less than a minute. So, you guys be the judge. Use what you want to use. You're only as good as the products that you apply to your work. So I will continue to use the AO822. Sorry, Lance. I gave it a shot and uh, it just didn't work for me. Thanks for that hat, though. I, I mean, that, that's a nice hat. And I probably won't be just putting those stickers on anything. But uh, anyway, you guys be the judge. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. I appreciate everybody that has subscribed. You guys keep watching, keep liking, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with next. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend.